Okay. Today is opposite day at People's Church. So we usually on our services sing our children out to go to class while the grown-ups stay in this space for worship. But today we'll be singing out our grown-ups and our kids will stay here. And this is a good practice, both because it's fun to do something new, but also because we know that learning is not something only for children and worship is not something only for adults, right? We both need, all of us need all of those practices to grow and find what is most true for us. So that is what we are making real today. So come, let us gather, come, let us learn and worship together. Good morning. I'm Marty Newman, a new member of the Sunday Services Committee. And in that behalf, I am delighted to welcome you to Peoples, whether you're here in person or you're here on Zoom. And of course, happy St. Patrick's Day. People's Church is a member of the Unitarian Universalist Association. And our foundational principle is the worth and dignity of all people. If that's so, then what follows, of course, is a commitment to justice and equity and acceptance of everyone and a personal responsibility and accountability in our search for truth. The, we use democratic principles in our processes as we work together and with our community to achieve justice and peace and liberty for all. As Rachel has already informed you, this is an unusual service today. But it's part of our practice of staying flexible and open to change, isn't it? So we'll be doing that. And uh, you may have already observed, there's a list of opportunities for the adults in your bulletin. And Re uh, Reverend Rachel may have some more information about that in her announcements. So in the meantime, let us just open our hearts and our minds to this experience as we play, share, and learn together. Welcome. And announcements. First, some logistics about how this service works. So we will sing the adults out to specialty classes and we'll also be singing out the nursery and preschool aged children. The adults that are here in person at the church, you'll see different offerings on your order of service as well as a map of the church on the back, because you might not know our classrooms as well as our children do. As you think about where you might go, I invite you to think about what you need today. If you're feeling sad or exhausted or overwhelmed, pick something that will bring joy or comfort or peace. If you're feeling pretty good today, I invite you to pick something that feels slightly uncomfortable that it moves you into that place of maybe being feeling a little off balance where the growth and the learning can happen. So try something new. And even if it is not your cup of tea, you'll have spent about 45 minutes with some other good people and that will not be a waste. With our children, we do advanced signups for specialty classes to make sure nothing gets too full and people are allocated well. We didn't do that with you all. So if you get to a room that is already pretty full and all the seats are taken, that is your signal to go somewhere else. So there is enough, there's enough space in the church for everybody, but not enough space in every room for everybody. So um, maybe have a second choice in mind. Um, people on Zoom, you have one option today. I'm sorry you don't get the same number of choices. You will be moved into a breakout room and I will be answering more of the questions that, that people submitted last week and any more that you want to bring with you this week. There is no offering today. So we invite you all to make your fi financial contributions to the church today, either through the donation box, which is in our foyer or online. There are a number of events after the service today 
and lunch for all of them will be served from the kitchen following the service. Today after church is our final inquirers class for, the, for a while. We'll be learning about Unitarian Universalist history and principles. It's a class especially for newcomers, but everyone is invited. So that's in room eight, which is behind me through a few walls at 1230. Oh, thank you. Next Sunday, Amy G.S.A. Brooks will be returning to our pulpit. She's a poet and UU minister in formation based in Grand Rapids who was with us last month. She will reflect on what ideas about purity and holiness might mean for us now. And I suggested this topic to her after we had a really great conversation about what does purity mean for Unitarian Universalists. So I'm really excited to listen to what she's going to say to us upon further reflection. And a few weeks from now, we will have our poetry service. And there's a few ways you all can participate. First, if you would like to read a poem of yours during the service, see Don Miller or send him an email to let him know. If you don't know who Don Miller is, is he in the room? He's the one waving his hand over there. Or you can contact me and I'll put you in touch. Oh, please be careful. Another way to participate would be to write a six word poem. You can see directions for that on the website or in the weekly church update. Okay. It is time to sing. <laughs> yes, I invite you all to rise and body your spirit to sing our opening song today. <laughs> Enter, rejoice, and come in. Enter, rejoice, and come in. Today we be Joyful day and joy rejoice. Do this move with me if you can. So open your ears to the song. Open your ears to the song. Here it comes. Just do a squat. Today will be a joyful day. Just a little squat. And joy rejoice and come in. Is everyone? Open your hearts, everyone. Open your hearts, everyone. Today will be a joyful day, and so rejoice and come in. Don't be afraid of some change. Don't be afraid of some change. Today will be a joyful day, and so rejoice and come in. One more time. And so rejoice and come in. And to rejoice and come in. Today will be a joyful day. And to rejoice and come in. Catch up. There we are. I'm Alan Hunt from the various committees, but in this case, representing the Stewardship Committee. Give you an update on where we are with our stewardship drive. It's a little different this year because of the way we're distributing packets, so they're coming in more slowly. But as of this morning or yesterday morning, we have 17 pledges for $48,000, which is a great start, right? We have two weeks left in our assigned period, and there are about 100 pledge forms and other information that are out so far. So that means there are about 80 still, still to go. So some of you haven't seen anything about this yet. You can still sign up for a few sessions. We have about five or six, I think, left over the next 10 days. Um, so if you want to do a grateful gathering, which I recommend, I've been to four, and uh, I enjoyed them all. <laughs> I hope those of you who were there did too. Um, the other option, if you really don't have the time or the inclination to attend a, a, joy, a grateful gathering, we are providing access to those forms today. So they're on the back shell of the 
table in behind, be out in the front. And you can pick it up if you want, but we really would rather see you go to a grateful gathering. So thank you and good luck. <laughs> I'd like to invite Sly and Ari up to light our challenge candle. Um, you know, I've always appreciated the lighting of the candle to symbolize the light of oneness and universal energy and in through us all. And what a delight it is today to have a very young child and an adult to commemorate the change in the events that we're having here today, this tiny child. May this remind us of the, this ritual and this practice, let it awaken us to the childlike curiosity and innocence and playfulness and honesty and warmth and discovery that is within us all. <laughs> Peaceful as a dove, joyfully, 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 joyfully. Keep it going. Light, light, light the flame. Peaceful as a dove, joyfully, joyfully, joyfully. One more time. Light, light, light the flame. Peaceful as a dove, joyfully, 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 joyfully. Fill the world with love. With us on Zoom, we invite you to light a chalice and put it in the chat quickly now so that Reverend Rachel can acknowledge who we have with us on Zoom. In addition to our chalice lit here at People's Church, we have a chalice lit in the Millwood neighborhood today. What a gift to be together in time, even when we're not together in space. I'd love to invite all the kids and middle schoolers to come up to the front and listen to a story. I want to tell you a story today, one of my favorite stories, and it's about a very brave prince and the monster named Sticky Hair. Now, one day, the prince was returning across the vast sea from school where he had learned to be a very brave warrior. And as he landed at the shore of his homeland, the captain said to him, whatever you do, prince, do not take the path through the forest back to the castle because in that forest lies an enormous monster who has been eating all of the people that take that path. Instead, take the long way around through the mountains to get back to the castle. Oh, said the prince, I have just returned from warrior school. I do not need to take the long way around. I shall take the direct path back to the castle. So off he strode, feeling quite confident of himself. And as he went down the path, he's like, well, there's no monster here. This is not a problem. Until he came around the corner and off into the distance, what did he see? But the biggest, hairiest, ugliest monster he had ever seen in his whole life. He was as big as a house. He had a ginormous head with eyes the size of dinner plates, and he was looking right at the prince. Oh, said the prince. His teeth were green and smelly with big orange tusks coming out of his mouth and huge orange smelled funny with a big belly with orange spots 
what, what was all over his body looked like a haystack. <laughs> and right then the monster said, what are you doing walking through my forest? You look like a very tasty morsel. And the prince said, oh, I am not afraid of you. I am a brave warrior and I have my sword. I shall fight you. And the monster said, oh, <laughs> I'd like to see you try. And so he took out his sword and immediately, okay, he took out his sword and he charged at Sticky Hair and whoa, he couldn't believe it, but the sword stuck in the monster's Sticky Hair and it ripped it right out of his hands. Oh my, he said. He grabbed his shield of strength and courage. And he pulled out his bow and arrows and he says, I have more weapons. And as he shot him with the arrows, every single arrow stuck in that big sticky hair. Roared <laughs> sticky hair, you think you can defeat me? But the prince said, Aha, I still have my youth and my strength. I shall win. And he ran at Sticky Hair and he tried to punch him. And the next thing he knew, he was hanging upside down in his sticky hair. Oh no, he was stuck now. And the monster said, Oh, <laughs> you'd look like a very tasty little morsel. <laughs> and then, the prince, who was thinking, oh, no, now what am I going to do? Hmm, what's my plan now? The monster says, how come you're not afraid of me? And the prince said, none of my weapons work. I am going to have to use my brain to outsmart this monster. And he said, ah, the reason I am not afraid of you is because my skin is covered with poison. And if you eat me, you will die a long, slow, painful death. Ah, I don't believe you, said the monster. Well, why don't you try and find out? And he could not figure out why this prince was so brave and he wasn't afraid of him. And so he started to think maybe he is telling the truth. Boy, I don't want to die a long, slow, painful death from poison. So the prince said, if you take me and take me out of your sticky fur and set me down and let me go free, I will tell you my secret of how I am so brave. Hmm. The monster had never had anybody reason with him and talk to him like that before. So he says, I am going to agree to your challenge. And he took him off. And he shook everything, all the arrows went to the ground, the sword fell to the ground, the, the prince fell to the ground. And he stood up and he said, fine, I will tell you my secret of my bravery and how I outwitted you, but you need to stop eating the people. Fine, said the monster, I'm only eating the people because they are trying to attack me and it makes me afraid. Oh. Well, here's my secret, said the prince. I'm very calm in my body, in myself, and I use my cleverness, and I use my brain, and I use my words. And that helps me to come up against really hard and scary challenges in life. And the monster started doing that. And he felt so much better. And people quit being so mean to him. And he quit being mean to other people. And after a while, he was not the scary monster of the forest. He became the gentle giant of the forest. And he was the protector of all the travelers on the path. And the people started bringing him food. And they became his friends. And the monster and the prince were best friends and they lived happily ever after.
while the adults go to their classes, the children are going to have an opportunity to act out parts of our story, make their own shields of courage and strength to their own monster puppets, use their own archery and swords, and make beautiful posters of kindness and love. So go now, go forth now in peace.